I'm Dr. Sandra Brown. I'm an ophthalmologist in North Carolina. There's been a lot of interest and concern lately about the safety of non-prescription eye drops. I'd like to talk to you today and give you a few tips for safely purchasing these products. There's a PowerPoint presentation that I did a number of months ago with my voiceover, which will give you more technical details. But I wanted to provide a shorter and simpler format to give you this information. First, what's this? This is an example of an eye drop which is packaged in a single-use vial. You twist it apart like this, that gets you one vial, and then you twist the cap off like that, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to waste it, and then you put a drop or two in each eye and you discard what is left. The single-use vial is an expensive packaging method. It's designed to be used with an eye drop which does not contain preservative. Typically, you will not find this packaging method utilized by companies which are making knockoff or clone versions of products because they cannot do so less expensively than the major brand manufacturers. So as far as your risk of microbial contamination, which is to say, bacteria getting in your eye drop and then you drip bacteria on your eye, the single-use vial is about as safe as it gets. How about somewhat the opposite end of the spectrum? This is an eye drop product over the counter, itch drop, pat a day, very common, which contains preservative. And if you take a look at the shape of the cap, you can see there's the flat top and then the kind of standard angulated neck and then the ridges that you grab a hold of. Take the cap off. It's got a pretty standard looking dropper tip. Nothing fancy about it. We've seen this kind of dropper tip on eye drop bottles our whole lives. So this product contains preservatives and this is the kind of dropper tip that you would use with a preserved product. How do I know it contains preservatives? Well, the preservative will typically be listed under inactive ingredients and it's very convenient when it's specifically identified as the preservative. Sometimes it's listed there and it's not identified as the preservative. So you have to be smart and educate yourself about what the various types of preservatives are, in particular in case there's a preservative you want to avoid. But from the perspective of safety, this is a safe product it's a mainstream manufacturer, it's a standard dropper tip, it's got preservative in it. Is there a situation where this type of bottle could be unsafe? Well, there actually is, and we're gonna wrap back around to that at the end. But what I want to do next is introduce you to the modern version of the eye drop in a bottle. This does not contain preservative, and that's okay because it has a multi-dose preservative-free dropper style. So notice the shape of the cap. It's kind of this funny square type of cap like this. And you take it off, and the bottle's a little bit of a weird shape too. It's flat on top, and it has this kind of long pokey stem on it. And the whole uh, part of the bottle that projects up above the actual reservoir is sort of longer and bigger and rounder than usual. And that's because in here, in this case, there's actually a filter which filters the liquid that is left on top of the tip of the cap, I'm sorry, on, on top of the tip of the bottle, so that when you let go of the squeeze, that little bit of liquid gets pulled back into the bottle but it goes through the filter and the filter filters out germs. There's a lot of different types of multi-dose preservative-free droppers, and this causes them to have a little bit of a different shape up on top compared to this bottle. Um, a lot of them will have actually a very tiny tip on them, and the tip is so tiny that the manufacturers will color it, typically blue or green, so you can actually see where the tip is. Okay, so once again, if you buy a product, it's by a reputable known manufacturer, you're getting it in a drugstore, the box 
clearly labels preservative free, so nobody's trying to hide or pretend anything. It's got a funny looking top on it and a weird looking cap. You should be good. Okay. Now people complain a lot that the multi-dose preservative free bottles and tips are kind of awkward to squeeze. And it seems as though there's a lot of liquid left in the reservoir by the time it gets to where you can't get any more out. And that's true, but this is how you get a non-preserved eye drop with a safe delivery system. Okay, so that's your best approach to safety. Look for a recognized manufacturer. Be sure you understand if you're shopping for a product that does not contain preservatives specifically, that it's packaged appropriately, either in a single-use vial or in a, a drop or bottle that has a non-preserved multi-drop dropper cap on it. <clears throat> Sorry, a little bit late in the evening, um, but hopefully you can understand what I mean. Now, let's wrap back around to the idea that a standard bottle with a preserved product might somehow be unsafe. How could that be? Well, in the past few years, there's been this very disturbing influx of entirely unregulated eye drops into this country. Um, they're manufactured overseas. We have a list of them under the alerts. If you look under the Amber Alert, you'll see some really peculiar products that you might see advertised a lot on pop-up ads, for example. But they're, they're not being checked on by anybody at the FDA. Don't assume that. They're almost always advertised as being non-preserved and they're not packaged in the right kind of bottle. So one way that you can place yourself at risk for developing a serious infection because the liquid in the bottle gets contaminated by your own bacteria and the, and the bacteria breed in there and you drip them back on your eye and God forbid that your boyfriend or girlfriend comes over and uses your bottle of eye drops or your mother-in-law Okay, and she's got some strange bacteria that you don't have, and now you have her strange bacteria, um, is because you should never, ever put a non-preserved product in a standard bottle with a standard dropper cap. So that's just basically red line number one. That's one way you can get into trouble. There's another way you can get into trouble, though. It's a little bit trickier to explain, but there's companies that are basically in the business of reverse engineering, expensive proprietary products. So if you want to buy one of the Refresh products, well Refresh is a great line of artificial tears, or Sustain or Blink, great line of artificial tears, but you're going to pay for that. So of course there's a desire to have the cheap, knockoff, generic, what have you. And what happens is that to save money, number one, these companies will take a product which is normally in a vial with no preservatives and they'll put it in a bottle potentially with no preservatives or they'll do something that might seem equivalent but might not really be equivalent um, and so you can't mess around with ophthalmic preservatives a lot of things affect how well they work including the viscosity of the eye drop the other ingredients in the eye drop the pH of the eye drop it's just not a great place to be reverse engineering these products. So where do you often buy these? You often buy these online. These reverse engineered knockoff super cheap clone products a lot of times do not have any kind of on the shelf representation because the major drug stores and big box stores are just not really interested in going there. And don't be fooled by the fact that you can buy something from Walmart on their web page because Walmart may simply be acting as a marketplace the same way that Amazon acts as a marketplace. Don't get me started on all of the lousy clone stuff that you can buy on Amazon. Some of it clearly designed to be pretending to be the actual product but is not. As I myself, I use Mural 128 ointment, which I bought on Amazon for years, somehow managed to be completely fooled by an ad and bought the worst sort of nasty knockoff Mural 128. I realized it, but I took a very good look at the box and the box was an amazingly good clone of the real Bausch & Lomb Mural 128 box. That's a digression, but it's just an example of how there's all kinds of online avenues for 
improperly manufactured and improperly packaged topical eye medications, non-prescription over-the-counter medications to enter this country, enter your house, and then ultimately contact the surface of your eye. So please be very careful. And there's a great website you can go to. It's Daily Med, D-A-I-L-E-Y, Med. And it's the National Library of Medicine's drug listing, basically. You don't even have to go there. Just open up a browser window and type in Daily Med, whatever, okay? And the first link that comes up is going to be the Daily Med link. Do that on a few of the more common, well-reputed products that you're interested in, dry eye product, dry eye ointment, itch drop, what, what have you, to familiarize yourself with what a real, active, functional, fully paid up, reputable, playing by the rules, daily med listing looks like. And then maybe type in some off-price internet brand, maybe one of those amber alert drops, and you'll find that with rare exceptions, they do not have active, properly updated looking daily med uh, listings. So this is not completely true. You have to familiarize yourself with what daily med is supposed to look like, but it is a great resource and it's also a good place to have a better opportunity to identify if there's an ingredient which is identified as a preservative. So this ran a little longer than I wanted, but um, I hope it helped you out in some way. And Feel free to use the contact form to reach out to the Dry Eye Foundation with any specific concerns you have about eye drop safety. Thank you for listening.